My name is Matthew Rorta and I'm in the transportation section in civil engineering and I do research in freight transportation as well as research in emissions modeling and, uh, and a variety of other things as well but those are really my two main focuses uh, at the moment. I generally focus on the demand side of, uh, of freight transportation so we look at um, uh, we try to simulate the origins and destinations of truck movements, especially in the urban areas, so within cities. Uh, we look at some of the congestion challenges that are associated with truck movements, parking challenges, and, uh, and then we look at, we, si we try to simulate how vehicles move um, on the roadways, uh, and we simulate, simulate that in quite a lot of detail, uh, looking at how cars follow one another, how, how vehicles decide to change lanes, and uh, the interesting thing about that is that it um, allows us to do pretty um, uh, high resolution modeling of emissions. It's very dis interdisciplinary. I mean, trying to understand why uh, trucks move from one place to another really is, um, it has as much to do with business management and supply chain management as it does with civil engineering and infrastructure. And so I collaborated quite a bit with uh, business management experts, but then on the, um, on the emissions side of things, we do work with uh, chemical engineers as well. We uh, recently finished a project for that was being done for the City of Toronto and the Toronto Atmospheric Fund. And this was um, uh, of interest because air quality is um, a, you know, a, a real concern uh, for the inhabitants of a city. Uh, this project uh, involved traffic simulation of both cars and trucks. and. Uh, and then we would simulate the emissions that come from the tailpipes of all of these vehicles as they're stopping in stop and go traffic on the Gardner Expressway or on the other arterial roads, uh, all, in, all in around the downtown of Toronto and along the waterfront. So we, um, uh, we simulate emissions and then we uh, have models of air dispersion as well. Fairly coarse models of atmospheric dispersion but they allow us to give a sense of what the concentrations of pollutants are uh, near the, the major roadways. Yeah, so we have, uh, uh, you'll see a simulation um, of traffic where you can see vehicles making decisions about how closely to follow the vehicle in front of them, uh, or uh, you know, the decisions of when to change lanes, when to, um, and how to route through the uh, road network to get to their final destination and uh, you can see all sorts of different interesting patterns uh, that you would expect to see when you're driving, but the, the model is able to simulate uh, this reasonably well. We're simulating traffic signals, uh, we're simulating on and off ramps from, um, from the freeways into the arterial road system, and so it's, uh, it's a very high resolution uh, representation of traffic in the city. We also have interesting uh, simulations of where people are by time of day. So, for example, I, c I live at home, I sleep at home, and then I come to work. And if you look at the general patterns for the, uh, for the whole population, uh, you'll see that the employment areas have higher populations uh, during the workday. And then uh, as the workday ends, then people will start to, start to distribute to other places and eventually end up back home, and that's where they sleep. So we're interested to know um, during the periods where you have the highest levels of emissions, um, the transportation emissions, those the highest levels happen during the peak hours of traffic. We're interested in knowing where people are at those times of day. We tend to focus a bit more on the methods um, because we have the expertise to develop the new methods. Uh, the policies, um, we uh, will test different policies to make sure that our method is giving reasonable and expensive uh, expected results and we'll be able to tell the story. We can try many different types of scenarios, policy scenarios. We could say, well, what would happen if you um, improved the flow of traffic because uh, you reduced congestion on the off-ramps of the Gardner Expressway in the AM peak hour? And we could assess, you know, if, if you were to improve that flow of traffic, um, would you be able to reduce emissions? And on the other hand, if you were to improve the flow of traffic, would it just cause more traffic? to uh, you know, take, take the place of the vehicles that you somehow removed. So it's, it's always a bit of a, um, a challenge to make improvements because when you improve flow, it tends to attract more vehicles um, to, to use the facilities that we have.
Well, I think this is, uh, uh, this is a type of research where society at large obviously benefits, potentially, if, some, if, the, if the methods that we use make their way into policy making. Uh, if better policies can be put forward, like potentially subsidies for uh, green commercial vehicle programs or, um, or other methods for trying to uh, improve on the, on the technology or to change the flow of traffic patterns or to change the land uses around the uh, transportation facilities, then there's a, a potential societal benefit in terms of public health. So that's really what I see as the major benefit. And this is why the Toronto Atmospheric Fund was quite interested in it. Um, uh, and I think that the government agencies that are faced with these decisions are in real need of, uh, of, of good objective science behind their decision making. And that's what we're trying to help them with.